So continuing on with mistakes I've made in aviation, uh, this one's for the gyroplane pilots out there. Uh, I was flying from Missouri to Ohio. Uh, this has been quite a number of years ago, about 15 years ago. I was flying a Magni uh, M16, it's an open cockpit aircraft. I'll show you what a Magni looks like here. Uh, Magni is an open cockpit aircraft, has a seat in the front, seat in the back here. And uh, I was the, uh, on this trip, I was the only one going. And uh, so I, the Magni, it's about 360 nautical or so from Cape Dorado to uh, Columbus, Ohio. So not, you know, you're gonna have to have one fuel stop in there somewhere. So uh, I had planned a fuel stop and I guess it was, I think it was in Tell City, Indiana, or one of the places about halfway there. And I learned a long time ago, back then, 15 years ago, they didn't have as many um, self-service gas pumps around. So it's a good idea if you kind of know where your fuel stop's gonna be to call ahead, make sure somebody's gonna be there. Cause I was actually gonna be flying on Sunday. So I wanted to be sure somebody was gonna be there uh, so that I could get gas. So I called ahead and they assured me, oh yeah, we're here all day on Sunday flying. Everybody's here at the airport, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, good. So for a little extra insurance, I put a five gallon can of gas in the back seat of the Magni. And it was one of those tall square cans that had a handle across the top of it. It's all molded plastic and uh, held five gallons of gas. Well, when the five gallons of gas is in the can, it's pretty heavy, you know, it weighs about 30 pounds. So I sat the can in the back seat here and, uh, you know, the had the strap over the top of the can here, holding it down. And, um, and when the can was full, it wasn't shifting around at all. Their life was good. So I fly into, uh, I think it was, again, I think it was Tell City, Indiana. I fly into Tell City and uh, roll up to the gas pump, and not seeing anybody there anywhere. I walk up to the, the FBO and there's a sign on the door that says, uh, gone flying, be back in four hours. And they didn't list the, they didn't list the time that they'd left. So I'm like, I don't want to sit here for four hours and then waiting on somebody to come back and get fuel. So I took the five gallons of gas that I had and put it in the main tank. And when I put the gas can back in, put it back in the back seat the same way. Problem was it was empty, right? So it's sitting in the back seat. It's got the strap across it, you know. And so I get back into the air and continue on. About an hour later, I fly into my next airport to, to go ahead and fuel up and uh, back on, come back on the throttle, uh, come back on the stick, and the stick is like locked up. I can only get the stick back maybe a couple degrees, and that's about it. So by this time, the thing, you know, I'd come way out of the throttle, and I'm coming down out of the sky pretty good. <laughs> so I ended up bringing the throttle back in wide open and with the stick as far back as I could get it, which was not very far, the aircraft actually, you know, the descent finally stopped and the aircraft would actually climb. So luckily I was able to get enough aft stick at full throttle that the aircraft would climb. And ultimately what I did was I got over the runway at the next airport and I found out that by adjusting throttle, by backing off throttle, I could get to a throttle setting where the aircraft was descending. And so what I did was I basically flew down the runway got over the runway at low level and then just backed out of the throttle enough that the aircraft sat down on the runway. Of course, as luck would have it, again, these things are always Murphy law, Murphy's Law. It's probably the single runway airport. There's about a 20 knot crosswind and just to make life a little bit more difficult. Luckily, the aircraft sat down on the mains. And so anyway, got the thing onto the ground and uh, taxied in to get fuel. And uh, when I got out of the, uh, when I got out of the, air the aircraft, I pulled the gas can out of there and I threw the gas can out into the grass for about as far as I could throw it, you know. And the line guy comes out, walks over to me, goes, well, I guess you don't want that gas can. I'm like, that gas can like to got me killed. I'm like, congratulations, it's yours. I ain't putting it back in the aircraft again. So topped off with fuel and I was back on my way again. But so what's the lesson learned in this? Well, the lesson learned, if you've got a gyro plane like this and you're gonna put anything in the back seat, don't put anything that's rigid by any means in the back seat because it can get wedged against the seat and wedged against the stick. And hold the thing where you can't, uh, you may not be able to flare the aircraft and get yourself in trouble pretty quick. So from that day on, I never put anything that was rigid in the back seat. It was always soft bags if we took bags and you know the bags usually sit down in the floor and uh, we have straps where they actually attach to the stick. But 
they can't uh, manage to get themselves wedged against the stick and, and uh, cause an emergency. So, there.